sometimes with the AI, there have been, I mean, one can speculate a bit. And in, in, on the one hand, I think you have, you can have like a very optimistic, uh, optimistic uh, predictions that, oh, yeah, it's going to be a tool. It's going to, I don't know, help us to solve problems like poverty or whatever. On the other hand, there can be very catastrophic scenarios. Uh, I don't know. Uh, what's your general perspective about this? Uh, which scenarios do you see in the middle or the long term? Uh, which scenarios will you see related to the influence of AI in your society? And which ones will you say they're more uh, probable than others, so to say? It? I don't know. I know it's a hard question, but I just... Of course, I mean, you cannot predict anything. I mean, yeah. this is just too hard at this stage. Mm -hmm. uh, certainly, this is a great tool. First of all, this is a tool that will revolutionize everything that we, the way we operate. Mm -hmm. I don't think you can compare it to anything known. So to, to me, this is the one of sing, the single biggest revolution that we ever experienced. Okay. It's comparable to the discovery of the wheel, to me. Okay. Um, there is a new uh, aspect of this that was never present also. So it's not that the magnitude of this revolution, but the thing is that every tool can be used in two ways either for the good or for the bad. Like you can take a hammer and um, and hammer a nail with it or hit somebody in his head like with, with a hammer. So this can be used to harm others or to help others. And that was always the, the, the case. Like when you, whenever you discover something new, like nuclear energy, this could be used for, for the good or for the bad. Uh, two options. What is new here is that there's, there's also a third option. Because your new tool, the AI, can be used for the goods, can be used to, to solve problems, can be used to 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 to, to harm, can be used to uh, steal information or whatever. But also there's a fair chance of this tool making their own choice mm -hmm. what to do. Uh, and uh, since these algorithms are really developing very fast and they, at this level today, they are more or less on the level of an eight-year-old. So they can already solve logical problems that are too hard for an eight-year-old child today. And the rate of progress is so uh, astonishing that they develop faster than the eight-year-olds develop today. Which means that the rate of progress in AI is, f is, is faster than the rate of progress of a, of a child that is developing. Which means that today's generation of eight-year-olds will never solve the problem logical problem that would be too hard for AI. So our, our kids will never solve anything that is too difficult for AI if the rate of progress is preserved. Yeah. So, so within 10 years, we will have algorithms that are better than adults in solving everything. And uh, at some point, they may also reach the capacity to make their own choices and decisions and be more independent. And uh, nobody knows what's going to happen because we, never, we were never in such, in such situation before. Okay, I see. Uh, there is this quantum scientist, quantum computer scientist, whose name is Scott Aronson. He works in the University of Texas. He has a very famous blog. And the thing what he wrote in his blog is that basically he gave an exam uh, to the, this ChatGPT thing, uh, this uh, quantum computing exam. And it was not perfect, but it had like a passing note. Uh, it has like a good note, not the best, but it has like a good note. So I guess uh, that's an example that it, I don't know if it can solve correctly uh, uh, or at least pass a quantum computing uh, test at in university level. I think that gives you an idea that, I mean, it can, I mean, it's not only saying words that sound right, but it seems like it can actually at least some, I mean, it, it's not perfect. Again, I don't want to exaggerate. It's not perfect, but it seems like it can solve some problems at least. Yeah. It's not, I mean, it's far from perfect. It has no, probably it has no consciousness, consciousness. It's, it probably has no will. But there is certain level of understanding of structures. And I've, I've tested this um, uh, in many ways. And my impression is that it would not be able to do things it does without some level of fundamental understanding of, of the text. Okay. It's not just compiling words and predicting the next one. I mean, that, that's how it was trained, by mm -hmm. seeing how well it predicts the next word. But in order to be able to predict the next word for complicated uh, strings of uh, words, that have meaning, you really have to understand the meaning. And I, I've run multiple experiments on, on these, uh, these chats and uh, they seem to really understand what's going on to some degree. At least uh, they have an understanding of logic of, 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 of the statements that we can feed them with uh, on the level of an eight-year-old, certainly. Okay, okay I see.
And I think sometimes uh, with uh, with systems, with very complex systems, there, there can be what is known as emergent properties in the sense that maybe you train in some system to do some particular thing. But then when you have many, partic- many I don't know, many complex systems or stuff, like some emergent property can emerge. I, I'm not, I don't want to kind of say that something super, uh, super conscious will emerge necessarily. But what, what I'm trying to say is that uh, this uh, GPT or whatever, these neural networks can be trained from one particular uh, ability. But sometimes there can be that even if they were not trained for other particular activity, they can actually perform some tasks that they were not particularly trained for, I seem. Sure. I mean, if you have a room that cleans your carpet, it's programmed to make your room clean, right? Mm-hmm. That's all it does. However, if you have a very complex algorithm that you allow the space of possibilities to be large so that this AI algorithm explores what can it do to improve the cleaning of your room, then at some point it's going to realize that in order to keep your room clean, the device itself cannot be switched off because if it's switched off, then it won't be able to clean your room, right? So so that will that can lead to the development of a self-preservation um, mechanism, instinct or whatever you call it, that uh, was not meant to be there, right? You didn't want it to be uh, aiming for uh, self preservation instincts okay. and yet it could do that because that's the uh, hidden price of making keeping the room clean right you, you have to be you have to be on uh, in order to, to clean the room so i can imagine many situations where these algorithms develop some tasks that were not planned that they find uh, optimum ways of achieving certain goals that were not expected and the larger the space of possibilities is, the larger the space of possible states and actions of the algorithms is allowed, then more of these possibilities will emerge. So certainly there can be things that were not planned. And especially this is uh, puzzling because we know exactly how to teach the, al- teach the network to develop. We, we know the teaching algorithm, but we have absolutely no idea what the algorithm that is produced does, how it operates. We know how to find this algorithm because we are running sen- essentially an optimization algorithm. We, know, we understand the optimization algorithm, but we have no idea h- what does that neural network really does. And the best way to realize it is to, to ask yourself, would you be able to take a neural network that does something, for, for example, predicts the next word, and program, write a program in C language, for example, using standard structure using loops and, and, and conditions and ifs and, and else's and everything else and write a code that does exactly what that neural network does. Neural network does. Mm-hmm. Nobody can do it. Okay. Nobody is able to create that. So we, we can only know how to train the algorithm but we have no idea how it operates. Which is puzzling because uh, uh, the rate of progress of the uh, quality of these algorithms is much faster than the rate at which we gain understanding. We see, we see. And I mean, uh, you may emphasize it in the way, and the sense that this is a tool, so it can have like a certain positive applications and negative applications. And it is a tool today, today. But, <laughs> but tomorrow that tool can make their own choices, and this is going to be more than a tool. Okay, so you actually think that? You yeah, think that? I think so. Yeah. Okay, okay. So for example, I don't know if you. I, I know it's super hard to make predictions, but in five, ten years, what you what's your ambition? Like, do you have a more optimistic or pessimistic ambition about how this AI is going to influence society? I don't know. Okay, so so the the example of of an eight year old that we know already that the le- the present level of of these algorithms exceeds the uh, um, logical capabilities of an eight year old, mm-hmm. and the rate of development is faster than the rate of development of of the kids. If you only could keep that state, that that pace for the next ten years, for certain, uh, for certain, you're going to produce algorithms that are better than, uh, I mean, logically, uh, they they will solve harder problems that uh, humans can. I guess I mean, the question is if this trend is going to continue or not, right? That right, isn't... right. So so that's the question, and uh, you, you, the problem is predicting the future is you cannot do it unless there is a certain trend, and all you can do is extrapolate the trend. Yeah. So we do have a trend, right? We know we know the trend. We know the pace at which the the progress uh, takes place. So all we can do is extrapolate. Okay, so we we have no idea it's going to change the rate, or accelerate or slow down. That we cannot predict that well. But but the, uh, if you just extrapolate, that's the outcome. Ten years and we have 
algorithms that are better than adults mm -hmm. at everything. Now, the things that humans uh, are uh, on top of the hierarchy on Earth is only because we exceed every other creatures with our intellect. We are not stronger, we are not faster, we are not bigger. Uh, the only advantage we have is our intellect. And now we are breeding uh, a species, so to say, or creatures that have no will, they have no consciousness now, and probably won't for a while, uh, who knows. However, they will already exceed us with the only advantage that we have over all the other animals is our intellect. And uh, this is not going to be dangerous uh, as long as they will be under control. They will not have their own goals, they will not have their own... Um, um, I don't know how to even call it, to uh, their ambitions, mm -hmm. perhaps. But once that is also part of the picture, I don't see the way how we would be able to control them. Mm -hmm. The same way that cats cannot or dogs cannot control humans because we are just smarter. They will be smarter. The question is where whether they will want to do what we want them to do. Mm -hmm. yeah, I guess, yeah, it's been very interesting. And I was reading some opinion by this uh, MIT physicist whose name is Max Tegmark. And he was saying something about that. The thing is, like, yes, it's a very fast. And the thing is, like, if, yeah, I don't know, if some, if the possibility of conscious emerge or something like this emerge, the thing is, like, how do you stop it in the sense? Because right now it's not only one company in the sense, it's not only open AI. I mean, maybe they're the ones that have the advantage, but in a way you can incentivate a competence in the sense that Google cannot live behind. So obviously they're also going to try to make their best. Oh, but then IBM cannot be far behind. So, the, so there's going to be this competence when you cannot, there is, it's very hard to say, hey, let, let's stop. Let, let's stop and think about things because hey, now it's a competence and if you're left behind, then that's it. And some other company advances. So there, there is this ongoing competence and there's some, and yes, there's this ongoing competence and just to improve it because if you don't improve it, someone else will and that will make a, you will be left behind. So I think, hey, I, I don't want to be paranoid or like be paranoid or be kind of um, extremist or exaggerate, but I just think like uh, in the hypothetical case, that's something a uh, that is uh, that there's some unexpected advance. Like, how do you actually stop it, or how? Or what do you do? Because I mean, she's giving an example of a cloning, human cloning, that was banned, and she she says that she only knows one example of a, of the case where a human was actually cloned, mm -hmm. that took place in China, okay. <laughs> and the guy who did that is in jail. Okay, and she was put in jail by the Chinese government. Okay, so she's making a case that. Because, I mean, that the argument is, uh, yeah, we can stop it here if we just uh, set, put certain restrictions on companies, for example, in the US or, or, or for Europe. Maybe that would be possible, but what in China, right? What, what can we do about other countries? And he makes a case that, in fact, Chinese people, Chinese government is also interested in having things under control because they also understand that this can be out of control once the certain threshold is is, is, uh, is is reached with, with the capabilities of these algorithms. So uh, he, he argues that this was possible with, with cloning. Mm -hmm. It is possible to be stopped. And actually the, the, the people who put the Chinese uh, researcher in jail for cloning uh, the human was in fact Chinese government. So uh, it was possible to reach certain um, equilibrium with the progress of, of, of that research. Mm -hmm. He hopes that may also be possible with AI perhaps. Unfortunately, the problem is that human cloning is not so lucrative. It doesn't bring you any um, uh, gains, like financial gains, at least not at the same scale at which AI can, right? Uh, right now, uh, the possibility of earning money on AI are unlimited. You can make so much money by building better and better AI systems that that's the reason why it will be harder to stop. It was possible to be to stop the progress with, with other research like cloning or genome manipulations it's not so lucrative perhaps in the future we could find applications that would be could be translated into earning money but ai systems already are so helpful in earning money that this makes it so hard to to stop the this arms race this competition between different uh, companies that that try to to do something to, to make a progress so um also there is this nice quote uh, that it is hard to make people involved in this business to understand the, the danger. And the reason why it's, uh, it's hard to make them understand is that 
It is always under hard to make somebody understand something if his salary depends on him not understanding that, right? So, 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 uh, so that's why perhaps many of these of of people in IT are so taking it very lightly. Uh, Mark Tegmark is one of the people who points out at, at possible dangers, uh, but and I think he's he makes re reasonable points. I think I can certainly see uh, well actually I, it, I have difficulty seeing how we would be able to control better and better AI systems in the long run I think at some point we have to fail I mean if th this is not if there is no floor for for the development of AI um, there will be no, nothing we could do at some point so the 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 the, the, the big keyword right now in this AI community is the it's alignment problem. How to align the goals of of AI with our goals? I mean, if you if you build a, a highway and there is a I don't know a, a bunch of ants on your way, mm -hmm. you will not think twice. I mean, you will not be sorry for ants that are kind of destroyed because you are building a road. You just do it, and not because you are an evil person. You want to har harm ants or, or 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 birds or whatever species are on the way. It's simply against your your interest. And you are not doing that to destroy them. You are just doing what you want, and you don't care about anything else. So that's what what is dangerous. Once AI finds its goals and has uh, certain um, ambitions, we have to make sure that these goals are aligned with ours. And nobody knows how to do it. Okay.